This next PowerPoint will focus on the tricarboxylic acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. At the end of the intermediate or transition step after glycolysis, pyruvate has been decarboxylated into a two-carbon compound called acetylcoenzyme A. Acetylcoenzyme A retains many hydrogens which represent energy. The TCA cycle will transfer much of this energy in the form of hydrogen atoms to the electron carriers NAD plus and FAD. The location of the Krebs cycle or TCA is the matrix of the mitochondria in eukaryotes and the cytoplasm in prokaryotes. Remember, the mitochondria is an organelle in eukaryotes, which consists of an outer membrane. Deep to the outer membrane, there is an inner membrane. And deep to the inner membrane, there is a matrix. The citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle takes place in this inner, inner uh, space called the matrix of the mitochondria. The same space where the transition or intermediate step after glycolysis will occur. Also, in prokaryotes, the Krebs cycle or TCA will take place in the cytoplasm of the cell. The tricarboxylic acid cycle or Krebs cycle is a cyclical series of chemical reactions in which one of the reactants in the pathway joins with a reactant outside the pathway to form an intermediate. This intermediate will undergo a series of changes that would eventually produce the original reactant in the cycle. In the TCA, a four-carbon compound called oxaloacetate joins the product of the transition step acetylcoenzyme A, which, as you remember, was created by decarboxylating and oxidizing three-carbon pyruvate. Acetylcoenzyme A is a two-carbon compound. Oxaloacetate is a four-carbon compound. When both come together, a six-carbon compound, citrate, is formed. Citric acid converted to isocitrate will quickly undergo an oxidation and decarboxylation step, which will turn this six-carbon compound into a five-carbon compound, removing hydrogen atoms from its conformation. The end result is alpha-ketoglutarate. Alpha-ketoglutarate is an important precursor metabolite in the formation of many amino acids. Alpha-ketoglutarate in the Krebs cycle, however, is oxidized and decarboxylated to produce a four-carbon compound called succinyl coenzyme A. So, so far we have taken 6-carbon citrate, which was formed by joining oxaloacetate, a 4-carbon compound, and acetylcoenzyme A, a 2-carbon compound, the product of the transition state in which the original reactant was pyruvate. Acetylcoenzyme A and ox oxaloacetate made citrate. Citrate is oxidized twice and decarboxylated twice to produce a four carbon compound, succinyl coenzyme A. Notice the coenzyme A molecule is still present. This is a high energy compound that is used to make 1 ATP. So this is the step where an ADP molecule is phosphorylated to make ATP. The remainder succinate 
is oxidized yet one more time. In this step, however, the electron carrier is not NADH, but rather FAD, which picks up a hydrogen atom producing FADH, FADH2, actually. The uh, end result is fumarate. Fumarate is converted to ma malate. Malate is oxidized yet one more time to make oxaloacetate yet again. The Krebs cycle has taken oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A through two oxidation steps, two decarboxylation steps, one phosphorylation that made ATP, two more oxidation steps. Notice the high number of oxidation steps which have gathered hydrogen atoms that will represent energy in the next step. The result of the TCA or Krebs cycle is two molecules of ATP per glucose, two molecules of FADH2 per glucose, six molecules of NADH per glucose, four molecules of CO2 per glucose, plus precursor metabolites that can be used to make amino acids. As a central metabolic pathway, the TCA is also amphibolic. As a catabolic pathway, it provides energy in the form of reducing power. Six NADHs have been gathered from two pyruvates, which created two acetyl coenzyme A's, each going through the cycle once will produce six NADHs per glucose molecule. Also, precursor metabolites have been created, especially in the form of alpha-ketoglutarate, which will be used to make amino acids. Intermediate use energy, immediate use energy, sorry, uh, in the form of two ATPs has also been produced. So again, the tricarboxylic acid cycle runs twice per glucose molecule because per glucose molecule, two pyruvates are created, which will produce two acetyl coenzyme A's. Each acetyl coenzyme A will go through the cycle once, producing four oxidation steps, three oxidation steps with NAD as the electron carrier producing NADH. One oxidation step has FAD as the electron carri carrier producing the reduced form FADH2. Also notice the two decarboxylation steps per cycle. This represents four decarboxylation steps per glucose molecule. Adding these four decarboxylation steps to the two decarboxylation steps representing each pyruvate in the each of the two pyruvates in the transition step will end up with six carbons that have been removed which represent the six original carbons from the glucose molecule that started in glycolysis. Aside from glycolysis, some cells may exhibit additional central pathways. The pentose ph phosphate pathway is seen in many cells. It is not as efficient as glycolysis as it makes one ATP and two NADPHs. However, it does produce a multitude of five carbon precursor metabolites, which can be used to make the sugars found in DNA and RNA nucleotides. The esner dudorov pathway is exclusive to some prokaryotes. It yields one ATP molecule, two molecules of NADPH per glucose, and again precursor metabolites that cells can use to create unique forms of sugar. At this point, you should be able to fill in the TCA portions of the Chapter 6 chart on metabolic pathways noting the location of the pathway in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, the starting reactants, 
the final product, the number of oxidation steps per glucose molecule, the number of ATP synthesized per glucose molecule, and the number of decarboxylation steps per glucose molecule. In eukaryotic cells, which is the first pathway that takes place in an organelle? In eukaryotic cells, pyruvate has to be transported into the blank. The transport mechanism used to move pyruvate is an active transport mechanism. Would it require energy from the cell? All the ATP generated by these pathways was synthesized by a process called Which of these three pathways, glycolysis, transition steps, or TCA cycle, generated the most ATP? Which of these three pathways, glycolysis, transition step, or TCA, generated the most NADHs and or SADH2s? What is the total number of CO2 molecules liberated by these three pathways? How many carbons are present in the starting reaction of glycolysis? This number of carbons in the starting reactant of glycolysis, which was glucose, should match the number of carbons liberated in the form of CO2. Is there a correlation between the number of carbons at the start of glycolysis and the number of CO2 molecules released by the complete oxidation of glucose? 